Right guys, you've all asked for it, so I'm going to give it to you, okay? This is the Bitcoin video that I've been getting on about to everybody in the Discord and also on uh, the YouTube videos that I've done previously, right? So I'm going to try and do it all so I don't have to edit it, hopefully. So I'm going to try and get into it very quickly, very precise and not sort of waffle on a little bit, all right? So it's going to be a quick um, strategy overview and have a look at yourselves. The the actual figures for October 1st of all, let's get into them right. So in October, it would have had seven trades. It would have had three losses and it would have had four winners. But the four winners are all for 5R. So it only take profit at 5R, the strategy does. So you would be 17% up if you're risking 1% per trade. Now in November, um, it didn't have a very good month in November. I think it had seven losing trades on the trot, right? But overall, from January until November, the strategy is way up. Um, once the monthly candle starts to really trend, um, the strategy really does hit hit the home runs basically. Um, it's a real good sort of strategy. You don't have to mess with it. It's set and forget. It's something that you can get alerts with, get notifications of when it sets itself up. Sometimes they're in the middle of the night because obviously the UK time Bitcoin trades 24 hours a day. So um, sometimes you've got to get up if you set yourself a notification. Make sure you do it because obviously it could be the big one and you don't want to miss these types of trades. So um, let's get into the strategy. Let me tell you exactly um, what the inputs of the strategy are, right? So as you can see, I use an initial balance or an opening range in all my type of day trading. So with Bitcoin, the opening range that I use, it's on, first of all, it's on a 15 minute time frame. After that, the opening range that I use is the first um, day the price action of the first day basically so if you box the high and the low of the first day off of the month so as you can see here on this chart it's the f uh, friday the first of october so let's go and just put a line in across the top and across the bottom and what we're trying to do is we're trying to box in the price action of the first of the month the high and the low to the range of that day okay so we box it off and what we're looking at doing is using that as a context or a bias now quickly why do we do that okay so if the if the average monthly range of the bitcoin candle is say like 8000 ticks and the um, initial balance or the opening range of that particular month the the first day of that candle let's say the price action is 800 ticks or 900 ticks you know that the thing is likely to trend bitcoin is a very trendy market you do get some months where the trend isn't isn't great and it's a bit more choppy like november for instance but most of the time with Bitcoin, it is a very trendy market. So if you're boxing off that, you can then use the context of that box to get long above it and short below it, as, um, which is what this strategy does basically. So as you can see, that's the high marked in, that's the low marked in. This is the opening range area on the chart. This is the initial balance. So as I've said, we're only looking to get long above and we're only looking to get short below. But we need a few things to set up to give us an entry on the chart, right? So once we get out of the opening range, and at this point here, we want to get out of it. This, this is the first breakout of the opening range, as you can see here, right? The proper breakout of the opening range is this leg here. Okay, we're looking for a leg out of the opening range, first of all. Also, the price has to be above the 200 period moving average. For longs and it also has to be below it for shorts okay and we'll get into that why that's important a little bit further on but what we're looking at doing is i call this a three two one with a donchin channel so i've got a donchin channel on my chart they're on every platform they're a free indicator you should never have to pay for them because they're completely free um, i have a 10 period donchin on and what i'm looking to do is trade a three two one breakout out of it now i love this entry because it gives you a really tight stop and you stop when your back testing is always in the same place all the time so what I'm looking to happen is for us to get a leg out of the opening range, but when we do it, get a pullback. Now, when I'm looking for the pullback, I need to close through the bottom of my Donchin channel in order to get long. So it's a little bit like an oversold indicator, but it's all it's all there on the chart in the Donchin channel. You don't need to look at anything else. Um, so there's the pullback. We've hit the other side of the Donchin channel, and then we get the breakout candle from the other side. It's like a three, two, one. So. We go out the opening range, we pull back, we hit the other side of the Donchin channel. I call it like a bit of a trap if you're thinking algos, some bears, something like that. They might be looking at that thinking, right, this thing's going to reverse. But because we know we've got the bigger context, we're looking for that trend. They set up a nice entry for us, right? It's a 3-2-1. I call it a 3-2-1 Donchin breakout, right? So as you can see, 
the stop always goes below of the previous local swing low, which is this point here. And the entry candle would have been bang on there on Tuesday the 5th of October. You can go back and back test it yourself. Um, and you would have been getting in at 49338 and your stop would be just below 48578, you know, maybe 10 ticks below, something like that, okay? So, as you can see, we don't touch this strategy. Once we get in, we're willing to take the one hour loss or we take the five hour profit, that is it, okay? If you start messing with it, you start taking profits too early, you'll basically cost yourself money overall because it's five R or one R loss, that's it. So don't be tempted to mess with it. Keep your targets in, set your take profit at five R and keep your stop in and leave it, okay? So I'll talk you through the winning trades it had, first of all, and there was a couple of losers as well that I can show you. So this one here, as you can see, would have been a five R winner, okay? You would have got your take profit here at this point. Once that happens, you reset again and you're looking for the same thing to happen again, okay? You're looking for a three, two, one. You're outside the opening range to the upside, so you're only looking for longs. You're above the 200 period moving average, so you're only looking for longs. And you're just waiting for this three, two, one to happen with your Donchin channel, right? So have a look at this. It doesn't happen here. Why does it not happen? Well, we don't get a close through the bottom of the Donchin channel. There's nothing there. But at this point here, we do. Okay, we hit the bottom of the Donchin. Everything lines up. We're above the 200. Now we're just waiting for the breakout candle through the top, but we don't get it. The thing carries on pulling back, carries on pulling back, and it sets up finally there, okay? At 14.30 on the 7th of October, you would have been long at 5.4671, and your stop would have been beneath that local swing low there. And that would have been a losing trade, right? Which they happen, it does happen. The strategy does have a lot of one or losers, but when you're making five R, they soon pay for themselves, okay, guys? And that's what we're looking at. So. Straight away, you take your one hour loss, it resets again. Now, the three, two, one happens, other side of the Johnson channel, the breakout candle is on that point there, okay? So on the 7th of October, at quarter past 10, it would have thrown you back into the market long and your stop would have gone beneath this swing low here. You put your five profit, five hour profit target in and just leave it, set and forget it. Don't be tempted to mess with it. Leave the strategy to play out, okay? And again, as you can see, and I mean, there's lots of these pullbacks here where you'd be thinking this thing's not going to go, it's not going to go, this isn't looking good. And then, especially on this one, you know, like this one here, if you're tempted to mess with your stop or move your stop up to break even or do all these things which cost people money, um, you're going to get caught out and it's going to obviously upset the strategy. So leave it because literally on this pullback here, there'll be so many people thinking to themselves, you know, this is this, I'm, I'm going to get stopped out, I'm going to just take, take, take the loss now, it's going to go down to my stop. Leave it in and eventually the patient trader gets paid out with another 5R winner there, as you can see. So that's the 5R take profit. You would have got out the market there for your 5R. After taking all of this heat, you would have been in the market for the best part of over a week, but you would have been paid, right? And that's what we're here to do. So don't be tempted to mess with it. This, this is what this is what you've not got to do. Most retail traders move the stop to break even. They don't... Um, stick to the take profits they'll try and nibble bits off where they shouldn't and eventually it catches up with you and it makes a good system into something that's probably more of a break-even system okay so don't be tempted to do it and this is a perfect example of why you shouldn't okay but again you took your 5r the strategy resets itself and unbelievably as you hit your 5r profit in this one you get the same the same entry again we're waiting for the 3 2 1 you get the close through the bottom of the donchon and then you get the close through the top. And the same thing happens again, very tight stop on this one. But because the market's got such trend there, you know, it, it goes again. And you would be putting your take profit target there, doing nothing at all, leaving the strategy alone. Yes, you would have taken a little bit of heat again on this. It would have nearly stopped you out again, okay? But lo and behold, you go and take another 5R winner, okay? Right guys, so let's get into why I use a 200 period moving average, right? Um, basically, it is, and I'll show you in a second, it, it, it's, but it's down to the fact that we still don't want to be taking a bullish breakout. Just because we're above the opening range, we're still not in, in our bull mode until we get above the 200 period moving average as well. And that can happen. Um, so let me show you what I mean by that. So if you go to the 21st of October, and this sequence here and put the 200 on and put the opening range in. The opening range will be well beneath the market. It's in this area here, right? So we're in bull mode, but we're not in bull mode if we're not above the 200. 
Um, we only take the breakouts um, if we're above the 200 and it's the same in reverse um, for the bearish entries. If you're below the opening range, you still want to be below the 200 when you get the 321. Um, so for instance, like if you're getting 321s in here, you can't take them, you are beneath the 200 period moving average. And it's the same for this sequence here as well. If you're taking these 321s and you're beneath the 200, they're more likely to fail, right? And you will have way more losing trades if you take them. So you've got to then wait for a fresh leg through the 200, like this sequence here. Um, let me just zoom in so you can see it on the chart. We go through the 200 with a decent leg, and then we get the 321, we hit the bottom of the Donchin channel, we wick through it, which is acceptable. We then get the green breakout candle to the upside. Now this would have been a losing trade at this point. Um, it is down as a losing trade on the back test. We would have got stopped out on this candle here. And that's that's basically why I use it. So you've got to be above the opening range. You've got to be above the 200. And then you're waiting for your 321 breakout to get you into the market. Okay. It's, it's simple. It sounds simple to do. But sometimes the hardest things to do are the simplest things. And... Um, you know, most people struggle with it. They try, as I've said, they try and move the stops. They don't stick to the stops. They sometimes risk too much per trade. They, you know, it's very tempting to take profits off if you, if you like at 4R or 3R or something like that, especially after you've had a few losing trades on the run. But you can't do that. You've got to stick to it. So let me know how you get on with the strategy. Let me know if there's anything that you can add to it. I would love to hear that in the comments. If there's anything that you can add to it, if you backtest it um, and you get different results than me, let me know. Obviously, always backtest a trading strategy before you trade it with live money. Um, so, yeah, make sure you do that. And if you haven't already, if you could hit the like button and maybe subscribe, that would be fantastic. This channel is going to be all about giving them free entries and free uh, mechanical type trading strategies to people for free. We're not going to, you know, I'm not, I'm not one of these Instagram shielsters that's going to like trying to charge people for anything. So I just think it's good to offer things for free and hopefully grow a good community. So thanks for watching guys and hopefully see you again next time. Thank you.